On August 22, 2009, Tony Sharpless returned to her West Brandywine Township home after working a 12-hour nursing shift at the Lancaster General Hospital. It had been months since the 29-year-old had enjoyed a night out, so she jumped at the opportunity to go out with her longtime friend, Crystal Johns. She left her daughter in the care of her mother and stepfather, telling her that she would see her again in the morning. The women left at 9.30pm in Tony's 2002 Pontiac Grand Prix sedan. They began the night at a club in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, and then went to the G-Lounge in downtown Philadelphia. While at the G-Lounge, Tony and Crystal met with the brother of Philadelphia 76's shooting guard Willie Green. The pair remained at the club until it closed, and were then invited to a party at Green's home. They arrived shortly after 3am, and continued to consume alcohol. Tony's stepfather was concerned about the outing. Tony had problems with alcohol and drug abuse in the past, and her medication she took for her bipolar disorder didn't mix well with alcohol. At this point, Tony had been awake for 36 hours straight, and the partygoers began to notice a change in her demeanour. After a minor disagreement, Tony became enraged. She poured a bottle of champagne on the kitchen floor and started kicking things. Unable to calm her down, Willie Green told Crystal that it was time for her and Tony to leave. Outside, Crystal attempted to take Tony's car keys, which only made her friend more angry. Insisting that she was okay to drive, Tony got in the driver's seat. Crystal continued to plead with Tony to let her drive instead, and when she mentioned a past drunk driving conviction, Tony slammed on the brakes and ordered her out of the car. Tony sped off, leaving her friend on the side of the road. Expecting Tony to return, Crystal waited, but Tony never came back. All calls to Tony went straight to voicemail, so Crystal attempted to contact Tony's sister to inform her of the situation. A few hours had passed, and Tony Sharpless had not returned home. Fearing she may have gotten into an accident, Crystal called hospitals and prisons, but none had any record of her friend. She called the West Brandywine Township Police Department and reported Tony missing. Tony's family and friends distributed flyers, while police were on the lookout for the missing woman's car. Investigators obtained Tony's cell phone records and learnt that her phone had last pinged off a cell tower in Lower Marion Township at 4.53am, around the same time she had left Crystal on the side of the road. Shortly after, Tony had either turned the phone off, or the battery went dead. On the thought that Tony may have driven down a boat ramp by mistake, and ended up in the Schuylkill River, a sonar search was conducted. A total of 12 cars were found in the river, but none of them were the Pontiac Grand Prix. Tony's family believed the mixture of alcohol and her bipolar medication, as well as sleep deprivation, may have led Tony to become a victim of foul play. Some began pointing fingers at the partygoers and questioned Crystal Johns' story about Tony speeding off and leaving her on the side of the road. Police, however, found no evidence to suggest that Willie Green, Crystal Johns, or any of the other partygoers were involved in Tony's disappearance. Three weeks after Tony went missing, detectives were contacted by the New Jersey State Police. It was revealed that an automated license plate reader had recorded a hit on Tony's license plate number in Camden, New Jersey, two weeks after she went missing. Investigators were sent to Camden, but found no sign of Tony or her car. The license plate number only took photos of the license plate, so there was no way of knowing who was using the car at this point. However, it at least eliminated the possibility that Tony had driven into a river. In October of 2009, Tony's family hired a private investigator to help in the search. Eileen Law made sure that everyone knew that the nurse was missing. Tony's face was circulated in local newspapers, and a number of television interviews with Law were conducted. Because of these efforts, a number of tips were reported to police. People had claimed to see Tony in Philadelphia, Lancaster, and Camden, specifically the areas known for its drug and prostitution activity. A number of the tips noted that the woman seemed upset and was in the company of two men. Eileen Law believes that the reported sightings are credible and that Tony was forced into prostitution against her will. Law also revealed that on the night of her disappearance, Tony's car was running low on gas, so it was possible that she may have been forced to stop somewhere 
and was harmed by whoever she encountered for help. On November 30, 2012, Eileen Law received a letter which claimed a Camden police officer had gotten into a fight with Tony and killed her on the night she went missing. The letter writer claimed that the police officer paid them $5,000 to drive Tony's car from Brooklawn, New Jersey to a shop outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Despite being able to provide the vehicle identification number of Tony's car, investigators determined that the letter was a hoax. Accepting that it is likely Tony is no longer alive, her family declared her legally dead. They remain hopeful that her body will be found and they will be able to give her a proper burial. Eileen Law continues to search for answers in the disappearance of Tony Sharpless.